A website's not complete without a blog or other types of structured content, so let's talk about CMS. CMS is located in two places. The first is in variables. To get there, go to settings, and variables are down here. We're going to create a new one. For right now, I'm going to call this phone number. This isn't CMS quite yet, but it's going to explain the concept, and I'm going to give it a phone number. Now, as I'm building my website, I may want to add my phone number to several places on the website. Maybe we'll have the footer and the header. Instead of manually entering this in every time, which we could do right here and put our phone number in, I'm going to click this plus button. This is going to allow us to access the phone number we've previously defined, and I'm going to click that. And now when I click out of it, you can see it right here. And I'm going to do the same thing on this other phone number I've defined. Click that, and we've got it here. Now, if I go back up to my body and change the phone number, we'll see it change everywhere else. So this is a great way to stay consistent within your website. But how does this relate to CMS? Well, instead of the data getting defined statically by us manually typing it in right here, we're going to get the data from another system. Web Studio lets you connect to any API and fetch the content and use it on your website. So if you want to store data in Airtable or HiGraph or Ghost or Strapi or Directus or Payload, there are many different systems out there, and you can even use multiple of them together. You're able to do that. Instead of this being a string, which is just some text, we're going to change this to be a resource or GraphQL. Both of these allow us to get information from a URL. Each third-party system will provide you exactly what you need here. Here are pre-configured connections to various systems like Airtable or Ghost. Ghost is a great open source blogging system, so let's bring in our different posts. There's much more to talk about here, but that's the first place I wanted to mention was variables. The second place is creating a page for each blog post. Right now we're on one page and we see every blog post, which is great. We need an overview page, but I want to be able to click into one of these and get a dedicated page for that blog post. We're going to do that with dynamic pages. We create a dynamic page by going to pages and just create a new page like regular. I'm going to give it a path of blog slash, and I need to give it something dynamic. So maybe like our blog name or our blog URL. Blog URLs are often called slugs, so I'm going to do slug. And now this page will load for any variation of this. So blog slash hello world, blog slash lorem ipsum, whatever it might be. And that value is then used in that variable. So the variable says, oh, they're looking for hello world posts. Let me go get that from Ghost and bring you that data. Again, we can go to the marketplace, pages, Ghost in this case, and insert the post page. It also has the variables to fetch the current URL. So I can go and test that up here. If I want to view this URL and get this information, I can do that. Now, as soon as I make changes on Ghost and click Save, they're going to appear on my website because all of this is happening in real time. I don't need to republish Web Studio. I just need to make changes in the other system. There's much more functionality in the CMS like collection lists, content embeds, dynamic sitemaps. All of this is covered in depth in our CMS videos, taking you step by step and setting up your site with these external systems. Web Studio CMS is incredibly flexible. It lets you work with your favorite tools and choose the best tools for the job. That's your high level overview of Web Studio CMS.